Today's geology lesson is all about how rocks are made. The easiest way to understand the different types of rocks is to compare it to something familiar to all of us. Cookies! Now the common building blocks of cookies are flour, butter, eggs, sugar, baking soda, and we'll throw in some chocolate chips as well. On their own, each of these ingredients looks and tastes nothing like a cookie. But with a bit of kitchen finesse, they mix together to become dough. The real magic happens when that dough is exposed to extreme heat. Depending on how long you bake it for, and how much of the ingredients you used, not every cookie is going to come out the same. Hopefully for all of us, it's a delicious result. In geology, the building blocks of rocks are minerals. Much like a cookie, the ingredients of different minerals are mixed together to produce different rocks. And this can depend on things like heat, water, pressure, and friction. Scientists hammer rocks open in order to better identify the composition or ingredients of the rock. The inside of a rock can appear much different because it is untouched by weathering. Mineralogists or mineral scientists can identify the minerals within the rocks by observing characteristics such as crystal size, shape, the pattern that breaks in when hammered, which is called cleavage, and hardness. Scientists often classify rocks according to how they are formed. There are many kinds of rocks, but they are all formed in only one of three ways. I like to use the term rocks in my socks to remember the three ways. They are igneous, metamorphic, and sedimentary. Or rocks in my socks. Let's start with igneous rocks. Igneous rocks are formed by extreme heat when magma cools above or below the Earth's crust. Some igneous rocks that we see around us are granite and obsidian. Next, we have metamorphic rocks. Metamorphic rocks are made deep in the earth and are formed by changes due to heat and pressure over a long period of time. Gneiss and marble are examples of metamorphic rocks. Lastly, we have sedimentary rocks. Sedimentary rocks are formed by small pieces of sediment that are transported to water and over time are cemented into rock by pressure. Sedimentary rocks include coal, sandstone, and shale. Now all rocks are moving through a process called the rock cycle. The rock cycle is constantly occurring and rocks can change over long periods of geologic time. Geologic time are cycles of the Earth's history over hundreds of millions of years. With the rock cycle, rocks can change from one type to another. Through such forces as weathering, erosion, compaction, melting, heat, pressure, cooling, and even crystallization. There's so much change constantly happening within the fascinating world of rocks. So let's review what we have just learned. First, just like cookies have different ingredients that come together, rocks are composed of different types of minerals that come together. This can depend on things like heat, water, pressure, and friction. Second, mineralogist or mineral scientist can identify minerals by observing things like size, shape, the pattern that breaks in when hammered, and hardness. Third, there are three ways that rocks are formed, igneous, metamorphic, and sedimentary. Igneous rocks are formed by extreme heat when magma cools above or below the Earth's crust. Metamorphic rocks are made deep in the Earth and are formed by changes due to heat and pressure over a long period of time. Sedimentary rocks are formed by small pieces of sediment that are transported to water and over time are cemented into rock by pressure. Fourth, rocks are constantly moving through the rock cycle. 
Within the rock cycle, rocks can change from one type to another over hundreds of millions of years. This can occur through such forces as weathering, erosion, compaction, melting, heat, pressure, cooling, and crystallization. Thank you for joining me for this geology lesson on how rocks are made. Minerals play an incredibly important role in all of our lives. But remember that minerals are a non-renewable resource. We only have a limited amount on the entire planet. That means we have to be careful in how we use and manage our use of minerals. We share this beautiful planet with so much other life, and we need to keep it sustainable for all of us. Be well, my friends, and always remember that you are awesome. Subscribe to my channel to stay updated, and a like is always appreciated. We'll see you next time at Sam's Outdoor Science for Kids.